What you want to do is design a place which changes their lives. Business of Architecture, episode 273. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for growing an impactful and profitable architecture practice. Today's episode is a sneak peek behind the scenes of the mastermind group I run with Richard Petrie and Eric Bobro. And in case you didn't know, a mastermind group is a small group of individuals who meet regularly to brainstorm and think tank about a particular subject. The mastermind is focused around helping architects in the group win higher quality projects. This group meets weekly online and we run two live meetups per year where we all get together in person. And in episodes 255 and 256, I talked more about uh, one of these mastermind meetings. I suggest you go there to hear more about what goes on in these closed door meetings. Everything that takes place in our mastermind meeting is held confidential by those participating. However, I felt that you would get a lot of value out of this conversation, so I got permission from those who were involved to share this with you. On this mastermind call, you'll hear Karen Paradis, who runs a high-end interior design firm in Connecticut, talk about identifying her ideal client avatar. Creating an avatar is where you describe the qualities of your fictional ideal client so you can better target, recognize, and attract that kind of client to your practice. When developing an ideal client avatar for your practice, most people make the mistake of focusing only on the demographics of their ideal client. For instance, the income range, the age, gender, where they live, etc. Now, while these things are important, more important are what I call the psychographics of your ideal clients. A psychographic profile describes not only what someone is, but what someone likes and what someone believes. For instance, being a conservative or liberal leaning would be a psychographic, and being psycho would also be a psychographic. (laughs) In this conversation, in addition to Karen, you'll also hear marketing coach Richard Petrie and architect Peter Tui, who facilitates these meetings. Peter was a guest back on episode 92. In today's episode, you'll discover the key to attracting the kind of clients you actually want to work with. Why having a mission and purpose is essential if you want to create an enduring business. And how to identify your personal mission, the thing that author Simon Sinek calls your why. Before we go on, however, I wanted to remind you that if you haven't already, get free instant access to the four-part architecture firm profit map video that's free for podcast listeners by going to freearchitectgift.com. Enter your best email address on that page and you'll get instant access. I also want to thank iTunes user Theater DNA, who recently left a review on iTunes and said, I can't recommend the Business of Architecture podcast enough. Enoch has provided not just architects, but really anyone working in a professional services firm and a valuable resource for creating a successful, forward-thinking, sustainable firm. Do yourself, your firm, or your employees a favor and take the time to listen. Thanks, Theater DNA. If you get value from this show, please leave a review so you can help others find the show. And with that, let's get on to today's episode where you'll hear, listen in to this private mastermind meeting where Karen Paradis discovers her why and how that relates to attracting her ideal clients. So, um, so let's get, can we, why don't we use Karen, you as, a, as an example, just to get us started. Um, why? Why, why do you do what you do? That's actually something I'm still discovering. So I'm going through this process now. And I actually did buy the book because I was so intrigued by the um, the TED Talk. Um, and it's funny, that's coincidence. I was, it was The uh, TED Talk was recommended to me by somebody else, or I think actually a podcast I was listening to that's actually pretty cool. You had also posted it um, on Slack. Um, so I was intrigued enough and I felt like the TED Talk left me without kind of a roadmap. And so I did buy the book. The book is under $10. It's super cheap. Um, And I'm going through the process now. So I'm about halfway through. I don't have my why yet. I have to be honest. Um, But one of the things they have you do is have somebody go through the process with you. Um, Because when you're so close to whatever, when you're so close to not the problem, but when you're so close to what you're doing, it's hard to see. um, It's hard to see it. And so having someone kind of come in and listen to your stories and listen, they, they end up finding the why for you, or at least giving you kind of flags or indications of, um, 
of that. So I'm not through the process yet, but I'm really looking forward to this. Is, I have something set up with someone this week, and you know, I'm, I'll be happy to report what comes out of it. Well, let, let's for if I may, um, you know, just just ask. So, so you decided at some point in time to to become a designer. Why did you do that? Why? Um, well, it's funny. I, I was actually a graphic designer first, mm -hmm. um, and I did a, a wayfinding package for a commercial um, for a commercial architecture firm. And the whole idea of manip manipulating the built space or, or being able to um, bring people through the built environment um, with intention. Um, and then the other <laughs> kind of silly story um, is that when I was a kid, I saw this uh, movie called The Black Stallion. I don't know if you guys had seen it, have seen it. It's a Spielberg movie, I think. Um, but it is about this little boy and his relationship with this black horse that, and they get stranded on a desert island. And most of the movie is just cinematography, no audio. Mm -hmm. And I, because of the absence of the audio, I became aware at that age that you could manipulate someone's reaction to an environment by designing it. And I got all excited about that. And so that's kind of influenced me all the way through. So that's it. I mean, that's really, I'm not all about making something look beautiful and pretty. It's more about how it uh, improves and influences someone's work environment, um, how it improves their um, living environment and therefore their life. So it's all those kind of intangible returns on design that I really, really enjoy, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so, so if I'm if I'm gonna add just a little bit to that, you uh, you're certainly not against beauty, but you're looking at beauty as far more than just skin deep. You Absolutely. you want the, you want the beauty to be um, the part of it is the relationship that people have with that built environment and how that you know positively or in some cases not in yours, but it, you know, like you go into a McDonald's and you're negatively influenced by that built environment. But you go right. into a beautiful yoga studio and that would be, you could get a positive influence, but a mediocre yoga studio would be, and they could be the same amount of beauty somehow. Um, right. Right. Um, right. Okay, got it's, it. It's how you move through that space. So, just just what, what I heard, I heard you just say it, I thought. Right? Often people just say it. And they don't even know what they've said. Right? That's why you need someone else, I think. But what I heard you say is your big driver, your big why, is you want to make a difference in the world. Yeah. And your vehicle for making that difference has chosen to be design and architecture. But you want to change people's lives through design. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, that's what your, it's your why. That was so, easy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know why? Because you said it. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make a difference, right? And it happens to be design. Probably, if you suddenly couldn't design, I would suspect you'd find another medium to, to make a difference and you'd want to change people's lives through some other medium. But at the moment, you, you know, well, at the moment, design is your specialty way exactly. of doing it but you'd probably you know but like for me for cricket you know when I finished playing sport uh, I still needed the challenge and the growth and the the you know the the chance to achieve and I swapped sport and I do you know for business now I feel I get the same type of buzz doing what I do now getting up on, you know, even speaking on stage and you get that nervousness and you've got to perform and you're under pressure and you've got a challenge and all that type of stuff. I get the same, but people say, do you miss cricket? I go, no, because I get the same buzz doing what I'm doing now. I've just swapped one vehicle for another. Mm -hmm. right. but, but for me, it's about the challenge and the growth um, and the achievement. For you, it's about making a difference in the world and, ch and changing, changing people's lives through design. Right, so so to 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 bring this back, Karen, to 
how you then um, attract people who are sensitive to this. And, um, um, you know, I think, I think now, you know, going through this, you're, you're ahead of where you were, you know, again, yesterday, whenever, but, but yeah. my point is the, um, is taking a look at your website through this lens. Like when I look at Karen's website, do I see a, a you know, a woman who wants to make a difference in the world, who wants to change people's lives through design? And, um, and to some degree we probably do, but is it obvious enough? And, um, and to me, again, you have a, a personality that, that maybe the best way to do this is a video, like, you know, meet Karen and, um, and then you're interviewed by somebody and, um, and it, maybe there's not even an interviewer there. Maybe you just, you know, write the question mm -hmm. down and then you just answer it. So the, the computer has the question or maybe because you have a, you work with a partner, right? So maybe she interviewed. I do have an assistant. Yeah. yeah. Peter, I like the way your videos, um, I think someone actually had mentioned this, but you, when you're um, answering a question, you don't look directly at the camera. It mm -hmm. is like you're talking to somebody else. I don't know if somebody else is there, but it, yeah. I think that's really effective. Right. And so that same, that same principle. Um, yeah. And, uh, but, but go deeper. I mean, you know, th this to me is, could be um, gold, not in the stamp from the standpoint of, um, marketing and, and uh, Richard gave us a story where she was he was marketing to a very specific type of person avatar and then that person actually answered the phone which is hilarious um, but for <laughs> but for you um, th that what you might find is is that you know the people who are if you market to them correctly the right people will call more often than not as opposed to the wrong people right so that's the, and, and then, and you know, so now that, um, you know, part of the, your who is going to be answered by this, you know, this one. Yeah. Hey, Architect Nation, real fast, I want to draw your attention to May 1st through the 3rd, 2019. I'm hosting the Architect Business Summit in Chicago, Illinois, and I would love to meet you there in person. During these three days, some of the most successful architects I've had the pleasure of working with will pull back the curtain to reveal what they're doing to grow their income, freedom, and impact as firm owners. This will be the must-attend event for architecture firm owners in 2019. You won't want to miss this. Go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash live to get information on who will be speaking and find out how to grab your ticket. There's a, there's a headline, there's a famous headline in marketing that, that you know you, you can start your story. You know I've got I've got to get this off my chest before I explode. Right? It's a hell of a headline because you what is it? And that's kind of how I feel now with Karen. Right? I'm, right. So I've got a button here and get this off my chest before I explode. <laughs> so so your thing is you want to make a difference in the world and you want to change lives through design. And Peter Peter was right. How does that apply to your target market? Well. To me, it, it seems it's not about the house. You know, there's that Lance Armstrong book, it's not about the bike. Um, you're looking, well, it is about the house, but that's not the number one thing. You're looking for people who want to change their lives through, right? Because yeah. what, what you want to do is design a place which changes their lives. So yeah. your, target, your target market are people who are, who are, I guess, so inspired or so enlightened that they realize, you know, or they can get excited by the concept that by changing their house, they can change the quality of their own life and how they feel and how they feel and how they live and maybe even the results they get out of life by doing those things. Yeah. And you're the lady, you're the lady, you know, we call, we call, um, old, uh, the magic man from Madrid. Um, your, yours is kind of magic as well. But your your target market is people who want who are open to having their lives changed for the better. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, right. that, you write that down. <laughs> that, that one. Was I, I'm ready furiously. Right. Yeah. Your target audience is people who want their lives changed for the better. <laughs> Guess what? You're going to see my website. And pay, pay, pay as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the. Um, so the uh, so so what I would 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 recommend is um, is 
is then say, you know, at some point in time, because, because I think your target audience is similar to mine in some ways. Um, yeah. if they're married and one of them might not agree with the other about all this, right? We might have a bean counter, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's just, you know, actually, that's what I, Peter and I had a conversation um, over the weekend, and I, that was one of the things that I took from our conversation, Peter, was that, you know, I'm, I'm so, um, I mean, really, in, as our, what Richard said, you know, I'm kind of more into the effect of the design than I am about, okay, so now I actually have to qualify this um, right. so, financially, and, I, and that was the piece I feel like I'm missing, um, well, which is really interesting, and I think everybody else could probably say that they're probably heavy on one side or the other in what they're doing. No, I've got to, I've got to, I'm going to explode again, right? So I reckon a lot of you, a lot of these people who, who are looking for a transforming life and all that type of stuff are often married to, to someone who balances them, right? Yeah. So, so that's why a lot of you have, you have a bean counter and then you have the one who's just your perfect person. <laughs> if the bean counter would just get divorced and go away, you'd end up with a great project. So... So knowing that, if you, when you come up with your avatar, your avatar is the the inspired, aware, someone who wants to, you know, is completely open to, to all this type of stuff, and then a bean counter who wants to bring it back to reality. And when you so when you write, you if you're writing for the dreamer, um, you've got you you mention, you know. Um, you're probably married to someone who wants to, you know, is constantly saying, but what about the money? And, and so you include all this type of dialogue in what you write because they go, that's me, you know. And I'm look, married. there's you, Jim. And, this, and they go, this woman is talking to me. How does she know me? It feels like she's writing to me. She even knows my husband or, or whatever, right? And you write those things down because that is, you know, and some of those questions, those are, what's their biggest challenge? My biggest challenge is my husband or my wife who doesn't, we've got the money, but they don't want to spend it on this. They don't have the vision. They don't, they don't see that it will change their life. They just see it will cost them a lot of money. And, you know, and so you write about how to convince a spouse who doesn't, you know, I mean, you can talk about but you include the fact they've got a difficult spouse in the writing, if that's what your avatar is. No, no, no. It's not a difficult spouse. It's a, it's a, a wonderful relationship with this person that balances them. Yeah. Right, right. So, so you can't, because their spouse is the, uh, uh, a big part the of the game as well. So difficult's the wrong word. So you the have dreamer to, and the realist. Right, exactly. That's already a better word. Um, but the end, the end, and they often, you know, they're attracted to each other because they know they're weak on one side, so they 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 get together and they balance each other out. Right. Um, the the other thing I would say, Karen, is is to talk about the the how you're going to achieve this. So in other words, you you have this questionnaire mm -hmm. that that includes blah blah blah, and um, you know, like in Lou Khan's case, they talked about um their childhood homes and that kind of stuff mm -hmm, and, um, mm -hmm. and to try to get at the, the deeper, you know, beauties, um, nice to look at, but when it's beautiful for a specific reason that, 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 you know, makes it exponentially more beautiful, you know, and I would use those kinds of words. Um, I love that beautiful for a specific reason. And right. that is it. Beautiful for a reason, not just beautiful. Right. Mm. And, and, and then, you know, most, you know, interior designers are fully qualified to pick out a beautiful, I don't know, pillow or whatever. And, uh, you know, but the, but what we do is we bring it all together and it's, it's, it's for, you know, everything is for a reason and that makes the, the beauty sort of exponentially more beautiful. Right. And, um, and then, and then you can talk to the bean counter by saying, you know, oftentimes, you know, what we do is we focus people's attention on what's really important to them. And sometimes that actually means saving them money because they're not spending money on stuff that they don't really want or need. Right. It won't affect them in any positive way. So it's not all bad news for the other person. Um, and the other person would probably, probably be open if you wrote something for them. You know, this is a, an important letter to someone who's married to a, you know, to a, to a dreamer who wants to renovate their house and da, 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 but, but you say, you know, it just doesn't make sense. And then you write a thing about return on design. Right. And you add that, that, um, that if 
I would consider adding that you might be also, you know, the, the, the PS at the end, PS, um, you might be surprised at how much, you know, a, a, a very specific design motivated by you and your needs, how that will positively affect you. Mm -hmm. Forget about your spouse, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and, um, and the, you know, that, that is, in, in my case, that happens often. Like I knew she was going to be happy. I just didn't realize I was going to be happy. You know, I get, I get that comment. Yeah. I've gotten that too. I, yeah. Yep. And I, if you wrote a letter to, to the, to the person who, who's really open to changing everything because they know it will change their life. And then you write a letter to the person who's the realist, you'd, you'd write two different letters and you know, to the person who's interested in the money, you know, and, and the cost, to, who's worried about the cost, here's your letter. To the person who's the, the dreamer and, 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 and the spiritual one, here's your letter. Very cool. And that is a wrap. I hope you got a lot of value out of this closed door sneak peek at the mastermind group I run with Richard Petrie and Eric Bobro. Now, since you've listened through this whole episode, I'm guessing that you're someone who enjoys personal growth and is constantly looking to improve yourself in all areas of your life. If that's the case, I'd like to invite you to two free online educational seminars for firm owners. Each seminar is about 60 minutes and you can watch it in the comfort of your own home or office. The first seminar teaches you how to structure your firm to avoid the overwhelm that so many small firm owners have and how to get rid of those fires that plague them. If you find that you're feeling overwhelmed, in this training, you'll learn how to go from overwhelmed operator to excited owner. Go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash freedom webinar to access this free online training. The second seminar you can access shows you how to attract your ideal clients into your firm consistently day in and day out, no matter what your competitors are doing. So you're going to learn some marketing secrets that actually work for architecture firm owners just like yourself. Go to architectwebinar.com to register for this free training. As always, the views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the hosts, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem!